Hi, I'm Hamira Gilzai, founder of Afghan Friends Network and the blogger on Afghan Culture Unveiled. Many people have been asking me what just happened in Afghanistan, and this video is all about that. I'll give you a quick overview of what happened, what's happening right now, and what you can do about helping the Afghan people. In April, uh, President Biden announced that he will be withdrawing U.S. troops. So uh, with that being determined, uh, all 8,000 allied troops and 18,000 American and allied contractors left Afghanistan. They were the ones that provided logistical support to the Afghan army and the Afghan government. So in the recent months, the Afghan military was unable to support um, the vital supplies that they needed and support all their outposts throughout the country. Through a soft coup, the Taliban took over Kabul on August 15th and the Afghan government fell apart. At this point, US, Germany, Britain, Canada, Pakistan, Switzerland, Denmark, Netherlands, and other UN agencies have ev evacuated Afghanistan and their nationals out of the country. So basically the Afghan people and the country has been handed over to the Taliban. And one of the questions that I've always been wondering or I've been wondering the past few weeks is, how was it that we thought that the Afghan army and the government would be able to uh, hold up against the Taliban, while the U.S. had been told repeatedly that they needed air support. For many of us, there's the looming question of why did the Biden government leave Afghanistan with, in this such catastrophic way? Why didn't the U.S. allies, like interpreters and people who worked in the U.S. embassy and throughout the country who supported the U.S. mission, why were they not evacuated in an orderly fashion since um, May was the last time that um, we pulled out our last troops? Why did we let the hard work of our servicemen and women go to waste with this final chapter? These are some questions that people ask me, but to be honest with you, I really don't know. I would like to ask our government these questions. Um, the Afghan people feel abandoned and alone, and they are very concerned about the future of Afghanistan. People are scared about an uncertain future, not only for women and girls, but men and boys as well. Many Afghans have been internally displaced and thousands of Afghans are crossing the border to Pakistan to an uncertain future. With the fear of the Taliban's reprisal, many Afghan artists, journalists, female and male advocates, filmmakers have left the country, but many more are still behind in the country and they're all in hiding. Women and girls, especially in cities, are very concerned about their future. At first, the Taliban were um, more open to the idea of allowing women to work and girls to um, go to school. But six weeks into their reign, um, girls at high school level are not allowed to go to school. Uh, and also girls are not allowed to attend university. All women have been asked to stay at home, especially if their jobs can be done by men. All university professors who are female were asked to stay home. And women who um, held any kind of government job has been asked to stay home so men can do it for them. The Taliban have also asked women not to wear cheerful colors, not to wear high heels that might make sound to tempt men to look at them, and not to wear perfumes that smell good because it may attract women, uh, men to them. This is a very 
shocking, upsetting, and devastating to all of us who have been supporting the development of Afghanistan for the past 22 years. And one of the things that we are wondering as Afghan Americans and Afghans in Afghanistan and advocates and allies, what is the West thinking? What is the US's policy towards Afghanistan? And why is the United States holding nine and a half billions of Afghan government and people's assets? Yes, you did not hear incorrectly. Nine and a half billion dollars of Afghan bank treasuries, Afghan government funding, and Afghan people's money is being held back by the United States. I believe this is some form of punishment to the Taliban, but to be honest with you, this is punishing the people of Afghanistan, especially a country that is about to go into an economic downfall. Afghanistan is devastated by war, by drought, by COVID, and now the funds of the country is frozen by the United States government. And it is unclear what the U.S.'s policy is and when these funds will be released. The repercussions of the funds being held is that the Afghan government cannot pay employees. Afghans who had money in their banks cannot withdraw any funds because the banks do not have any money. Afghanistan is going towards a very cold winter. If we do not release those funds, if we don't help the Afghan people, the country is going to go into a downward spiral and go into devastation. And I do want to clarify that the nine and a half billion dollars is not aid funding. These are the funds that were uh, put into securities in a bank king system of the United States uh, as a security measure to keep the funds from falling into the wrong hands. And it seems like the wrong hands are the US government's hands right now. So in conclusion, I want you to think about the Afghan women who I worked with the past 18 years. They're going to fight for the rights that are given to them under the Afghan constitution which is in, li in line with the rights of uh, women that are given in Islam. Please know that Afghan women, Afghan people do want peace in their country, but we have to be able to stand up with them and help them. So please call your representatives, ask them to release, if not the whole of nine and a half billion dollars, parts of that so Afghan people can buy the basic needs that they need, flour, sugar, um, so the prices of goods don't go skyrocketing any further. I also ask you to help um, the resettlement agencies such as International Rescue Committee, um, Lutheran Immigration Services, Jewish Family um, Services, and uh, also ch Catholic Charities. These are different resettlement organizations that are helping Afghan refugees resettle in the United States. So thank you for watching this, and I hope this gives you an understanding of why things are the way they are in Afghanistan right now.